If you are a non-technical founder, you might have considered to partner with a developer or a CTO. While it looks like a good idea, it's not always that easy, and there are tons of pitfalls in this tricky relationship. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what is the most predictable scenario with technical co-founders and how to avoid conflicts with them. Hi, I'm Amory, founder and CEO at My CTO Friend, where founders come to learn how to build their tech startup. With this startup snack series available on both podcasts and YouTube, I want to share the essential to make it easier for you to build your tech startup. So to illustrate today's topic, let me share a real story that happened a few years ago. A CEO came to me for some advice to grow his early stage startup. He was uh, kind of, it was kind of an e-learning platform project dedicated to the health market. The CEO was quite known in his industry, and he had found a technical co-founder to develop the solution. When we met, they just launched the first version of their platform, and they were doing everything possible to attract and convert new customers. What I understood after a few weeks working with them is that the tensions were getting high between the CEO and the developer. Let me explain, let me explain you why. They were associates. The CEO had invested almost half a million in the company, and the developer had been working for almost two years without getting paid. But the developer couldn't keep working without any paycheck. So, one day the real conflict happened, and the CEO and the developer ran crazy. The developer asked to be paid for what he has developed so far, the two years of work. And the CEO who had burned almost all his cash in acquisition and video production and said that it was also the developer responsibilities if the product wasn't generating enough money. So the worst part is that after a few days, the developer turned down the server, doing blackmail with the CEO. So the CEO invited me to come to their office to try to restore the platform. They also invited the lawyer to note everything I was doing on the server and explaining what has been done by the developer. And it became like the, in the movie, like in the NCIS, you see? The developer saw my connection, so he cut my IP with the firewall. So I found a workaround, and then a while after doing what I was doing, the backup, he erased the entire thing, the entire software. In a matter of second, the folder became empty. So. What he did wasn't only to erase the software, but he installed a copy of that so software on his own server. And he relaunched the application from there, making it impossible to manage for the company. No need to say that after that, the conflict ruined the company. And neither the CEO or the developer got what they wanted. I didn't even get paid for what I've done with the lawyer. But anyway, so... Let's analyze together this situation. Let's picture what the expected plan when we launch a company and what really happened afterwards. So the classical plan is, that, is this. You partner with a developer and you set some expectation for the end result. We build the product, we sell the product, and the team get a salary. That's, what the, what, that's exactly what was the plan for this startup too. But instead, here is what almost always, always happened. Sales are almost always too slow. The product is never finished and clients are willing to pay but for more features, which mean more developments. So unless your developer is a Buddhist, rich or crazy, the personal and financial constraints will prove to be too much. And he or she will give up at some point. That's just the most predictable scenario. So. How can you avoid this for your own company? So first off, not everyone who understands tech is qualified to act as a CTO, period. The developer wasn't a CTO. From my point of view, he chose the wrong technology to build the platform. He reinventing the wheel in some, at some point, and he ends up to become a very complex software, while things could have been more, much more simpler. Secondly, there wasn't any product management in this company. They specified the product with specifications, with list of screens, workflows, features, and then the developer worked very, very hard for more than a year until he finished his first version. And like in many projects without product management, without small and clear tasks, without achievement 
uh, and without achievable milestones, the development took much more time than expected. So you might think, okay, cool, thanks for sharing that story, but how can I avoid these type of stories for my own company? To answer that question, let's analyze the root cause of this type of situation and what happened most of the time between founders that shares, uh, when with founders that shares equity with developers. In fact, the root cause is just a matter of perspective. For a developer, the good work means sustainable products, well-documented, interesting to build, which also means complex. While for a business owner, good work means tool that allow me to take money, to make money, sorry, to test what's useful or not, to understand the customers. And that's a totally different perspective. So in the, the priority are not the same. So the expected results won't be the same neither between developers and the founder. And one of the last reasons why partnership with technical co-founders might fail, it's because non-technical founders might have no idea if the tech co-founder is really good or not. Unless, of course, if you worked with him or her for years, and if you already challenged his work with other developers or CTOs. So that being said, now you might wonder how to build that relationship the right way. Well, this is, and there is only one way to make it right from my point of view. It's by working together and by getting things done. Don't get married with someone you just met. It's way too risky. As a co-founder co -founder relationship should be built over years and going through challenges of starting a business is definitely not a favorable context to build a long-term business relationship. It would be like having a baby from the first night. Not a good idea, right? So let me put it again. The only situation where you could share equity with a developer or with a CTO is if you already worked with him or her for years on another project, I mean. If it's not the case, I would recommend you to just work with this person on service-based first and to partner after only maybe six months or one years of a successful relationship, after going through some challenges and after having a first version of your product done. So now, the last and maybe the most important thing to take away from this video. Ask to your future co-founder to share his work on a daily basis. And by sharing his work, I mean the source code through what I call a Git repository. I will put the link in the description of a video that explains how to do that. So this is the only way for you, if you have access to that source code repository, this is the only way for you to evaluate the quality of his work with someone else or to recover the software in case of a conflict. Now, in conclusion, don't give away equity unless you've worked for years with your future co-founder. The service-based first rela relationship is definitely the way to get started. And if, if you want, you can at some point give 50% of the regular fees. If the developer is really motivated with your business, just pay him half of his regular price and you can convert the rest later if everything goes fine. Then challenge his or her work with external tech support and always have access to the source code from the day one. Everything developed for a company needs to belong. To the company. If you enjoy learning with us and want to see more, consider subscribing. Help us spread the word by hitting the like button and by sharing with your entrepreneur friends. If you have any question or want to suggest a topic, feel free to comment down below. And you can also check out our website to learn more about our coaching program and how you can join.